guys, it's Kimberly from Are You Awakening? And I'm here today to talk to you about what's going on with your eighth chakra, which not a lot of people talk about, right? Secret. It's a secret one because you can't see it like you can see the other seven, but you know. What's the eighth chakra and what the hell is it for and why are we needing it right now? Well, you're probably familiar with your first seven, right? And I'll, I'll put a link in there if you don't know about that, but your first seven are related to your earthly life, right? You here in the physical corporeal vehicle that you're in, you have seven representations of different areas that you chose to learn in when you came to earth. Well, you have five more chakras that are beyond those seven and they're outside of your body, what we would call your body. So your eighth chakra is usually between a few inches and a few feet from the top of your head. Some people call it the soul star chakra and they got all sorts of names, but I just call it the eighth one because it's easy to count. So the eighth one is symbolically related to your higher self. So what that is, is this is the physical you, and this is the representation of the ethereal you, the part of you that's bigger than you that is not in a body. So you might call it your light body. You might call it your higher self. It would be someone with a much broader perspective of this world than you were having in your physical body with your, with your consciousness focused on the physical. So what's it do for us? Well, if you think about all the oppression that's been going on on this planet forever, you're gonna realize that all it really did was separate this. It separated the physical you from the higher part of you, the telepathic part of you, the, the soul planner right? The one who knew the game, the one who knew it was going to come down here and play a part, experience polarity, right? Now you can blame anybody. You can blame the reptilians. You can blame the Illuminati. You can blame everybody or anybody for this separation, but it was a chosen separation. It was something that you decided to experience by coming here on earth. Now, it really never was separated. That's the thing. We just told ourselves that it was. So here you are. You've probably pretty come pretty close to balancing the seven, right? You recognize when you might have a blockage in, in your root chakra and you do whatever you do with whatever permission slips you have to clear out that energy, right? So you're probably good at the seven. Now you get to the eighth one, and that's where we are facing that release of that separation. And what does that mean? That means that you're realizing that you never really were separated. Your higher self was always there, just hanging out in the wings, letting you do your thing until you realized who you were, right? And as soon as you realize who you are, that separation is not a separation. It lights up and you're like, Oh yeah, there's a bigger part of me and yeah, I kind of do remember a lot of that stuff that happened and why I chose this and I remember that this is really limitation. It's not really true, but it was fun while I believed it, right? So you are now, once you're learning to balance these seven, are now getting up to that eighth one where you're like, all right, let's bring her into the game because she knows more, right? She knows a, that I know how to manipulate my body and take care of that, but she also has friends that she talks to on another level, right? That's you and anybody that you speak telepathically with, that you connect with. Oh, I was just going to call you. I just texted you or all of those things. That's you guys communicating on that eighth level. All right. So now you're just going to learn how to do it consciously now that that whole separation thing is out of the way, 
Now that you know it was a limitation, it's not really true. So what happens? What does that look like in your real world? Well, it's a little weird, I'm gonna tell you. All right, it's a little weird. But what it really is, if you want to think of it this way, is it's you meeting your team. You can call them your guides. You can call them, you know, grandpa that's helping you along the way, whatever you want to do. But you're actually meeting not only your non-physical team, the ones who are not in a physical body, who are just helping you out here on this earth plane, but also those physical people out here with whom you're already connected right? You're already telepathically connected with them. And you may or may not know that on the earth plane yet. But up here, you've got way more friends than you know about. So the key to accessing this eighth chakra is ease. I know it's a four letter word, but it's a good four letter word. It's ease. It's a lot of ease. It's quieting your mind. I know you've heard it all before, but let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm a little frisky today, huh? So what does this look like in the physical? Well, you start to get a little fuzzy sometimes. For instance, perhaps you're going on a walk and you totally zone out. And you zone out and then you realize someone's talking to you and you're like, wait, what, huh? There's a good, there's a good sign that you are working on accessing your eighth chakra. So basically what that means is your focus is going above the physical. Now your body knows how to take care of itself. You probably wouldn't walk in front of a bus, but you're free to consciously focus up here on higher level thinking. You also might realize that you are invisible to a lot of people. And you could walk through a crowd and be like, why is nobody seeing me? Nobody's saying hi, nobody's nodding. Um, they may not walk into you because their higher selves are moving them around you for your experience. But what you're, what you're realizing is that you're at a higher frequency where not everybody can see you. So that's one way you know that you're connecting with your team. So you'll be getting guidance as you're walking along this crowd and this and that. And you might see other people who are at that same level in that crowd and they'll probably stick out a little bit to you. They won't be just staring at their phones or anything. They'll be doing something regarding observing right? Because they're there to learn from this experience as well. So expect some spaciness, expect some weirdness, but also expect that there'll be more voices, there'll be more touches, there'll be more uh, interactions in the environment around you because your belief systems are now allowing those things in to say, all right, I've had enough weird shit happen to me that you know, and nothing's happened. I haven't died yet. So let's see what happens. Let's bring it on. And that's when you'll start to encounter more of those alternate communications that you were just letting go as random before. So I made this little diagram of kind of, uh, it was actually built by my team. They said, you know, build it with this concept in mind so that people could take a look at it and kind of get a, a recognition of the fact that there is the you down there who's perhaps riding a bicycle, but there is also the you up there with your friends and with your guides and advisors watching what's going on and making decisions as you're going along. And so you are going to learn to navigate on both of those levels, right? You're gonna be able to be riding that bicycle and also to be planning what's going on in that environment that you're riding in. So take these communications that you're receiving. Let's say you get a, a twitch in your leg or a, for me, helicopters go by at a certain time when I'm thinking about certain things. Take those as just as important a communication 
as something you're bringing in from your five senses, like something you see right in front of you. Because what you're doing is you're learning to speak your higher self's language a little better, right? Now, your higher self knows all this stuff. They're just kind of letting you dip your toe in the water a little bit at a time to learn to accept things you would have normally dismissed. So that's how we're working on accessing that eighth chakra. That's how we're learning to, uh, I call it strengthening it like a muscle, like you work it out. The more you work it out, the easier it gets. And, and then it just becomes natural until the point that you get that it's just automatic, right? And then you'll be a telepathic being on all of these levels, right? So you're bringing it down to the physical now, allowing those physical characteristics to change what you accept as communication. Good stuff. It's so much fun. It's like living in Wonderland. I'm telling you that it's a lot of fun. So I hope you join me on this wild timeline that I'm on, one where everybody wins, where there's always tacos and motorcycles. So don't forget, always be yourself all the time. Love.